What's up everyone, my name is Augustine, I'm a musician and a massive fan of the Beatles and I'm here outside the Casper Coffee Club in Liverpool, England. Now, a lot of people remember the Cavern Club, but not many people remember this place. The Casper was owned by Mona Best, the mother of Peter Best, the first drummer of the Beatles. Before they started playing at the Cavern, the Beatles played here many times and they even helped painting and decorating the place. I think it's a good idea to let people know about the Casper because they know about the cavern, they know about some of those things, but the, the Casbah was like the um, place where all that started. It was actually before the cavern, all of that. And we had a more intimate relationship with it. It was almost our club. So, you know, we'd help paint it and stuff. The Casbah Coffee Club, officially Casbah Club, was a rock and roll music venue in the West Derby area of Liverpool, England, that operated from 1959 to 1962. Started by Mona Best, mother of early Beatles drummer Pete Best in the cellar of their family home, the Caspa was planned as a members-only club for her sons and their friends to meet and listen to popular music of the day. Mona came up with the idea of the club after watching a TV report about the Two Eyes coffee bar in London Soho, where several singers had been discovered. The quarrymen, John Lennon, Paul McCartney, George Harrison and Ken Brown, went to the club to arrange the first booking to which Mona agreed, but said she needed to finish painting the club first. All four took up brushes and helped Mona finish painting the walls with spiders, dragons, rainbows and stars. In addition to the four boys' artistic contributions, Cynthia Powell, later to become Cynthia Lennon, painted a silhouette of John Lennon on the wall, which can still be seen today. I remember the Casper night, the opening night, because we were upstairs in this house in West Derby, which I didn't know a lot about obviously, because I wasn't in the museo's business or anything else, but I was with John and Paul. And I think when we went downstairs, and the whole setup was, was wonderful for an aspiring young rock and roller to have that on their doorstep and to be able to sort of perform um, safely. I don't know how, how to put it, it was safe and it was secure. The group often played at the Casbah as other venues like the Cavern Club had a jazz-only policy at that time. The cellar, with its original decoration, still exists. In 2006, Culture Minister David Lamy announced that the cellar was to be given Grade 2 listed building status and a blue plaque, after being recommended by English Heritage. It was open as a tourist attraction in Liverpool, along with Paul McCartney and John Lennon's previous homes at 24th Lynn Road and 251 Menlove Avenue, respectively. It really sucks because Google Maps said that the place was open and so I came and I wanted to see, you know, inside the place because you can still see the decoration that the Beatles did and some art by John Lennon. So I took the bus, it was like a 30 minute bus ride and when I got here I realized that the street is actually kind of dead as you can see, they're just houses and uh, I thought mm, this is kind of weird, I, I don't think there's a coffee club here. And I was like, where is it, where is it? So then I found this place, number eight. And uh, I was like, I, I really don't think there is a, a working coffee club here. So I asked a lady who lives next door and she said that the bar hasn't been open for a long time. So yes, that kind of sucks. Mona Shaw was born on the 3rd of January, 1924 in Delhi and married John Best in India before moving with him and their two children, Pete Best and Rory Best, back to Liverpool in 1945, where they lived in various houses. After moving to Queen's Court Road in 1948, where the Bests lived for nine years, Mona was told by Rory about a large Victorian house for sale at 8 Heyman's Green. The house, built around 1860 by an unknown architect, had previously been owned by the West Derby Conservative Club and it was different from many other family dwellings in Liverpool as it was set back from the road, had 15 bedrooms and one acre. 4,000 square meters of land, all the rooms were painted dark green or brown, the garden was totally overgrown and the cellar was used for storing coal. Mona decided to open the club which was located in her cellar on the 29th of August 1959 for her sons, their friends and young people to meet and listen to popular music of the day. Mona charged half a crown annually for membership to keep out the rough elements and served soft drinks, snacks, cakes and coffee from espresso machine which no other club had at that time. Records were played on a small record player which amplified them through a 3 inch speaker. Mona had booked the Les Stewart Quartet to play the opening night, with Harrison on guitar, but they cancelled the booking after Stewart and Ken Brown had a quarrel. 
Stewart was angry that Brown had missed a rehearsal because he was helping Mona to decorate. As 300 membership cards had already been sold, Harrison said he had two friends in a band called The Quarrymen who would play. John Lennon, Paul McCartney and George Harrison went to the club to arrange the booking, to which Mona agreed, but said she needed to finish painting the club first. All four took up brushes and helped. The Quarrymen played a series of seven Saturday night concerts in the Casbah for 15 shillings each, starting on the 29th of August to October 1959, featuring John Lennon, Paul McCartney, George Harrison and Ken Brown, but without a drummer and only one microphone connected to the club's small PA system. The opening night concert was attended by about 300 local teenagers, but as the cellar had no air conditioning and people were dancing, the temperature rose until it became hard to breathe. After the success of the first night, Mona gave the quarrymen a residency and paid the whole group £3 a night. Every Saturday thereafter, queues lengthed onto the street, which was financially good for Mona as she charged one shilling admission on top of the annual membership fee. As there was no amplification, Lennon later persuaded Mona to hire a young guitar player called Harry to play a short set before the quarrymen, but this was only so they could use their 40 watt amplifier. Pete Best was studying at the grammar school when he decided he wanted to be in a music group, so Mona bought him a drum kit and Best formed his own band, the Blackjacks, who later played at the Caspa. Chas Newby joined the group, as did Ken Brown, but only after he had left the quarrymen. The reason for Brown's exit from the group was that he turned up to the seventh Saturday night of the quarrymen's residency at the Caspa with the flu, so Mona sent him upstairs to the best living room to rest. This caused a massive quarrel with the rest of the group when Mona came to pay them, as they wanted Brown's money to be shared amongst the three of them as Brown had not played. Mona refused, so the quarrymen angrily cancelled their residency and stormed out. The Blackjacks became the resident group at the Caspa, although the quarrymen occasionally played there again and often visited. It was in the Caspa club that Lennon and McCartney persuaded Stuart Stuckcliffe to buy a Hofner bass with the money he had won in the John Moore's art exhibition. Even though the membership list later spiraled to over a thousand, Mona closed the club on the 24th of June 1962, with the Beatles as the last group to perform. So this is pretty much it for now, thank you so much for watching until the end, if you like this video please give it a thumbs up, you can also follow me on Instagram or Facebook, there is a PayPal link as well for donations, every donation will be absolutely appreciated and the most important thing is, if you like this video please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel because I have many many videos about the Beatles, I have videos visiting very famous Beatles locations like for example Paul McCartney's house in London or Abbey Road Studios and here in Liverpool and making so many videos about the Beatles so if you love the Beatles as much as I do I'm pretty sure you're gonna love this channel as well thank you so much for watching until the end see you next time bye well I'm afraid that's just run out of time oh, I'm okay. really sorry, oh, sorry. Um, bye everyone thank you very thank much you. for you